French Dispatch, latest from Wes Anderson at his most Wes, Wes Anderson y. So, set in the fictional town of Ennui Saint Blase, a name which I think tells you all you need to know, chronicles the creation of the last edition of the French Dispatch, a publication very much in the mould of uh, the New Yorker, um, presented in that, in that very Wes Anderson y way as an obituary, travel guide, and three brief features from the paper. The obituary is for publisher Arthur Howitzer, uh, Bill Murray, who brought the world to Kansas and whose maxim is to his writers, try and make it sound like you wrote it that way on purpose, which is actually a very a very good maxim for writers. And he has a sign in his office that says, no crying. Francis McDormand is the Cinder Cremens who becomes involved with Timothée Chalamet, Again. his second film, his second film of the week, um, as a young radical who is writing she's writing about the student uprising that he's involved in and her assignment basically includes reading proofing and improving his uh, manifesto and the film basically kind of flits backwards and forwards but it's got a, a number of different stories so there's that story there's a story of Roebuck who is someone who is always writing about food because it has an emotional place in his heart but he can recall everything that he reads and he can recall entire articles that he wrote and recite them out loud as indeed he did. Tilda Swinton is J.K.L. Berenson who promotes a French splash action pioneer played by uh, Benicio del Toro who is a convicted killer whose muse is his guard played by Lea Sadu, currently starring in No Time to Die. He becomes the figurehead of a group of artists who would quite quote inspire and occasionally insult uh, assault each other. And the film moves from black and white to colour, from four by three to wide, from movement to tableau vivant, from live action to animation. I mean, it feels like it's bursting into What's animation. tableau vivant? People Super standing play. in a live tableau. OK. So, I mean, literally what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, uh, and it does all of these often within the same story, sometimes within the same scene, and occasionally within the same sentence. It's incredibly wordy. I mean, the, the script, must have read like a novel, packed with the kind of tiny detail for which Anderson is, you know, sort of celebrated uh, and famous. And every single gag feels like it has been machine tooled to within an inch of its life to be that specific gag. Now, the two things I'd say is this. The first thing is I was very aware on the first viewing that it's a, probably a film that you'd need to see two or three times in order to get everything that was going on. Even then, you probably wouldn't have ev everything. And... I sometimes felt like, OK, I definitely need to watch this again because I'm not quite getting involved in it. Second thing is, it is, as is true with other Anderson movies, probably best described as a live action animation because that's what it feels like. That has been true of other of his films. And of course, he has directed animation. It has a kind of, it's almost like a music box, you know, like a, everything everything happens with a kind of mechanical metronomic precision, the way the stories kind of intertwine and interlock. You will either find it abundantly charming and funny and super smart and full of references, many of which I didn't get, or the thing I came out thinking was it's a bit like a box of fondant fancies that from the outside looks absolutely delicious, but when you've eaten three of them, you think, okay, that's enough for the moment. I should qualify that by saying I am pretty certain that a second viewing of the film will enhance my my enjoyment of it because it does feel so Wes Anderson-y. It does feel like, I mean, I've heard an interview with him even just this morning, I think on, uh, which I can't remember where it was, but... He talk, talking about, you know, this is the film that he made exactly the way that he would want to make it, Although, as if you've ever seen a Wes Anderson film in which that wasn't the case. It doesn't, however, have for me that emotional pull of Grand Budapest Hotel or, I mean, I know you and I both have a fondness for Life Aquatic. You know, it's, not, it's not in quite the same ballpark as that, but it does feel like there is an awful lot going on that is absolutely the most Wes Anderson film Wes Anderson could ever make. And on that basis, I think that Wes Anderson fans will take to it. I I don't love it. I found I found it a bit much. But that may just be, you know, it's my quirky, irksome thing. It overquirked itself from my point of view. Even even whilst I was looking at it thinking, this is astonishing, it is like a live action animation and the way in which the frame is changing and the colour scheme is changing and now they're in animation and now the thing is, is, is well done. There are individual gags that land overall. I found it slightly impenetrable. 